and welcome. It's day five in our Holy Week devotional. And today, of course, is Monday Thursday. And um, we learned in our devotional that that word Monday comes from the Latin for mandate because of the command that Jesus gave to love, that his disciples would be known by love, that they were to love, not only to love their neighbor as their self, but an even higher standard to love as Jesus has loved them. So today we're gonna to be looking at uh, Psalm 23 verse five. Today and tomorrow actually we'll be looking at the same verse. So you might've noticed in your notebooks um, that it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, dot, dot, dot. That's because right there it says in scripture, you anoint my head with oil. We'll be looking at that phrase tomorrow. But today we're going to be concentrating on the cup, right? Because it says my cup overflows and talking about being having a table prepared, right? What a perfect verse for Monday Thursday when we're celebrating and remembering the Last Supper. Now, the Last Supper, of course, was when Jesus and his disciples celebrated the Passover meal. There would have been thousands and thousands of people in Jerusalem at this time to celebrate the Passover. And you may be a little bit like me and be just sad that today we're not getting to go to our Monday, Thursday service at church. Tomorrow we won't get to go to Good Friday. And on Sunday, on Resurrection Sunday, we won't be able to go and meet together in person at our churches because of the coronavirus. And it's all, oh, it's just, it just makes me sad. I just feel a little crestfallen about it, even though I know that God has something beautiful and rich for us in this shelter in place resurrection day. I know he does, but I'm a little sad because I like my traditions. I like, you know, my rhythms and my celebrations, right? And so does the Lord because he set in place these holy convocations, these festivals um, for his people to celebrate, to remember year after year. And Passover is the one that we read about a ton in scripture that they would come together to celebrate the Passover, to celebrate when God delivered them from slavery and bondage in Egypt. It was the story of who they were. It's the story of who God was. It's the one that they're reminded of again and again and again every year when they took the Passover Seder meal. And so um, I think we have an opportunity here, you know, maybe to even set up a simple Seder supper for your family. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to have the elements, but maybe Maybe you take the cup, maybe you drink some juice, maybe if you have wine and your family drinks wine, you have some wine, you have some tortillas. I mean, come on, we can, unleavened bread, tortillas work, right? Um, and just have a way, a simple way to remember who God is for you, what he has done on your behalf. So let's dig in a little bit. So. Um, I sort of alluded to the fact that my family celebrates a simple Seder meal uh, with my kids. It is very simple. We have very low expectations because I have a lot of kids. Um, but there's four cups, okay? And these four cups are the cup of sanctification, the cup of deliverance, the cup of redemption, and the cup of praise. And these all have um, a verse linked to them. This is in Exodus 6, 6 through 7, and it says, Say therefore to the sons of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out. Okay, that's the cup of sanctification, to bring you out, to mark you as my own, right? To sanctify you as my own from the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from their bondage. I will also redeem you with an outstretched hand. So that's the cup of deliverance, the cup of redemption. Um, then I will take you for my people and I will be your God and you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So when it talks about Jesus taking the cup after the meal, so they would have had, there was a cup, that first sanctification cup was at the beginning of the meal and then as they told the Passover story, they'd have a second, um, they'd have a second cup, then they would eat the meal and then they have the third cup. 
and that was the cup of redemption. That's the one that we read about in our, in our devotional today, the cup of redemption. And then Jesus says, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until we're all together, right? Um, I'm paraphrasing that obviously, but until the marriage feast of the lamb, and then they'll drink that fourth cup, right? And don't you love how it says, and I will take you for my people. I will be your God. That is the whole story of all of scripture is God with us. God choosing a people for himself, sanctifying them, delivering them from the bondage of sin and death, leading them, um, redeeming them, purchasing him with the precious blood of the spotless lamb of God, and then taking us to be with him forever, right? And so we get to finish Jesus started this meal, this Seder, with his disciples the night before he was betrayed, but he didn't finish it. They never drank that fourth cup. And so we get to experience that with Jesus one day. Scripture calls the marriage feast of the Lamb. Right? In Revelation 19, it says, Let us rejoice and exult and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. And of course, the reason that we can clothe ourselves with bright linen, bright and pure, is because the blood of the Lamb has purified us and made us whiter than snow, has made us pure and blemish-free because He is the pure, spotless Lamb of God. How cool is that? Oh, I just think it just brings me joy. It just brings me joy. And doesn't it make the current cup that we're drinking, the cup of the covenant, the cup sometimes experiencing sufferings, right? It's just as Jesus said to his father, let this cup pass because he knew that there was a cup of suffering that he would be poured out on the cross. It says that for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. So he drank the, that cup of suffering because he knew a cup of praise, a cup of joy awaited him in heaven one day with us. Emmanuel, God with us. And so we too can endure suffering, but we can endure the difficulty of, of living um, in that mandate because it involves it involves death, doesn't it? To have to die to ourselves in order to love the way that Jesus loved, in order to love sacrificially, in order to love um, in a way that lifts up and honors others. And it involves some hardship, some grief sometimes, some dying to ourselves and uh, serving someone else, thinking not only of our needs, but the needs of others, right? As it says in Philippians 2, it makes that cup worth it for the joy set before us, waiting for that last, that fourth cup of praise that we get to drink with him in heaven. It's pretty awesome. Y'all have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.